next. On this famous episode of Next TV, Sabrina becomes a published author, and Ben finds out you can cut metal with water. Ah. I see you're enjoying my book. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Not at all. So you, you write all these? I have written all of these and many more. Wow. Yeah, these are just the ones that I have out in soft cover right now. That's impressive. Yeah. How do you come up with ideas for stuff like this? Where do ideas come from? <laughs> they just come out of the ether for me. They come from, um, you know, I could be having a conversation with someone or, uh, like I said, I could wake up in the middle of the night with a voice in my head. These are actually a number of books that I'm working on right now. And each one is a plot idea for a different story. We can just come up with something, you know, and I'd like to see you write it into maybe a piece of flash fiction. Flash fiction is very short, um, but it's a great way to practice your writing skills. Is your lead character male or female? Female. Do you want to throw a name out there? Krista. And how old is she? Uh... I don't know, 18. Is it science fiction? Is it romance? Is it mystery? You know, that kind of idea. Oh, it has to be romance. Okay, romance. It has to be. This is easy. It's all it, just coming to me. It is. I, I just know. throw all these out there. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's the point. Okay, so this is a romance, which means Krista has a, a love interest. And is the love interest female or male? So is this a... What should be female? And what's her name? Lucy. Lucy, fabulous. And are they in high school or college or high in school? school? They're in high, high school. school. So we have Krista, who's in love with Lucy. Does Lucy know that Krista loves her? No. Okay. Does Lucy know she's gay? No. Okay. The conflict then would be Krista trying to help Lucy come out of the closet. Yes. Now we have to actually flesh out the story. We need a beginning, we need a middle, and we need an ending before you can write anything. They should start having their conflict right away. You only have about a thousand words to tell Flash. Do you want Krista and Lucy to end up together? Or do you want Lucy to reject Krista or, yeah. I think she should reject her. Does she reject her for a guy? Yes. Okay. So it opens with them leaving the classroom with a handful of paper. Um, and it ends with Lucy rejecting Krista for the guy, mm -hmm. and the conflict in the middle is Krista trying to convince Lucy that she loves her and to come out. See, pretty easy, right? Yeah. <laughs> Great, so we have our basic outline. So now what we do is we take cue cards. So what these cards do is they expand on the basic outline. So we have our three points. We have our beginning, our middle, and our end, right? Mm -hmm. So this is actually going to um, create a a solid connection between that bit beginning, middle, and end. Your job now is to actually sit and write this. The first thing I want you to do is actually put in your title and uh, go card by card and, and just write it down into a paragraph form so that you have the whole thing kind of blocked out for your yourself. Now you're going to actually take that and you're going to flesh it out with dialogue and you're actually going to write the thing, mm -hmm. okay? Okay, I'm done. Let's see how you did. Awesome, your inside flash amounts. You're at 725 words and the outside is 1,000 words. That's brilliant. If you were going to publish this, you would go through an editing process. So you would work with someone um, who's a professional editor to make sure that everything is the way it's supposed to be so that the story makes sense, the characters make sense, um, and also to make sure there's no typos and that kind of stuff. Let's say it's totally edited and everything's all ready and set to mm -hmm. go. I would then format it so that it would work on all the devices, so like a Kindle and a Kobo and your iPhone, things like that, uh, and insert the, the cover and then I upload it to the companies and the companies distribute for me as a bookstore. Would you be willing to edit and upload mine? Absolutely, yeah. We can come up with a cover and um, I'll do the edits and the formatting and I'll let you know when it's ready to go. Yeah. Okay, cool.
So how do you actually make money off this? Right, so uh, you want to build a fan base. So there's a whole bunch of marketing things that happen on the other end as well. Just writing the thing is a, it's a very small part of the entire process. There's a huge amount of things that you have to do afterwards to uh, get in contact with fans and build your own web page and a fan page on Facebook and Twitter and all those things. Um, but once you uh, have a few fans and people start to know that you're a good writer, they'll start to buy your stuff and you start making money. Cool. There it is. It's pretty good. Chances are you're slumming at a fast food restaurant for the summer to earn some money. You say things like, I can pay for school. I can even buy my own textbooks. Or I can buy my own computer for classes. But what you're really doing is buying new clothes, overpriced food, and electronics that you don't even need. Guys, it's important to devise yourself a plan. Cute clothes won't stick with you until you're 45. Thousands of dollars in debt can last a lifetime. You should understand how much you'll be making for the summer and how much of that you can be putting towards your tuition. Try to pay for your own education as much as you can now. Did you know that your school is a counselor? Do you even know his or her name? A lot of people don't want to go to a counselor because they don't trust them. But you can tell them anything, you can vent about your day, you can talk about how much you don't like people, and they can't tell anybody. It's great. They also can help with university and college choices, scholarship, application forms, you know. They also sometimes can help you make and even drive you to some doctor's appointments, which is fantastic. They, well my counselor, I don't know about you, but she keeps chocolate in her cupboard in case you need a little sugar fix. Counselors are almost like a personal assistant, and they can't tell anybody. Like, it's fantastic. Three points, machine and aerospace. Hi, I'm Blair Morrison. I'm Ben. How you doing? So you got a P38 in your hand? Yeah, it's Pretty cool. What is this? Uh, that's a model of a P-38 aircraft. Okay. We actually made that in one of our milling machines. Did you want to see what it was made on? Sure. Show okay. me around. We have a gooseneck assembly here. It's a uh, mechanical part that's used on the Dash 8 aircraft. So our intent here is to bring in this one here and we're going to use it for reverse engineering and we'll walk through the process of how we take this part and build it up to get a, a a production model ready to deliver to a customer. Okay, yeah, show okay. me how to do it. We know that this is a primer okay. of some type, but we want to know what kind of metal is under here. It could be oh, aluminum, yeah, okay. it could be steel, it could be titanium. So we have a pretty get good... rid of all this primer then to figure that out. Yes, we do. Okay, and you're trying to get to the raw metal. Raw metal. So that you can figure out what kind of metal it is so that you can make replicas of it. Exactly. Okay. So, we have the raw uh, assembly here. here. Yeah, just set it down. And here we have an XRF analyzer, okay? Handheld device, and as I had said, it uh, shoots X-rays. You can see it's activated there now because the lights are flashing. That's uh, letting you know that it's shooting X-rays, okay? And then you can actually shoot it, and you can see that it's made of 7075 aluminum, and now we're gonna go and develop a 3D model of this piece part. So okay. how does this work, Chad? What we're gonna do is we're gonna put it on the table here. The camera will capture reference points okay. and it will uh, basically capture all the 3D images. So it's going to put it in the 3D image on the computer. So let's take one down a little farther down. And basically, it's just taken numerous pictures from different angles and whatnot. Different angles. There you go. Okay. The stuff you just took right there. See how it shows the red? The red chunk, eh? The new shot, yep. And that's all you do. You just keep leapfrogging all around until you fill it all in. What's next? Next is engineering. We use uh, very high-end software to develop uh, tool paths that you're seeing here in the yellow. These are the paths that the tool will actually follow in order to cut the material off of the original stock. Okay. And once we develop our manufacturing process, we can bring it into a verification software and we can actually simulate what the cutting looks like. What you see here is a simulation of the tool running around the part 
uh, removing the material. So this way it's I know. really cool looking. When I, bring, when I send this out to the, the machine, I, yep. I feel comfortable knowing that it's gonna cut this exact shape and then the operator also feels comfortable with it too. The part initially starts as a four by eight sheet of aluminum. And what we do with this is we put it on the water jet and we cut out the original stock shape, which is what you see right here. So this is what the, the sheet was, the shape we cut out, and this is the result. It's just amazing how the water jet can cut through that much aluminum. Yep. So this here is the water jet. Uh, this machine has dual heads that cut through the material using just water and a garnet, which is basically sand. And it uses 90,000 PSI to cut through the material. And this is the router. This is where we do our first operation of cutting on this part. This looks familiar. Yes, it yeah. does. Yep. So this is the exact replication of the 3D simulation that we saw earlier. Yep. Okay, here we go. So, this is what we started with. And then after the machining operation, we end up with this. So we have our finished features and our first finish operation. Now, this part will now go to another machine um, for another operation on the second side. The part will then go into a measurement lab, and then that's where uh, Blair should be waiting for you to have a look at that machine. Uh, what we have done is we've made one. Uh, production run could be 50, 100. So we're going to uh, do a, a test on our first off. We call it a first off unit. Okay. We're not going to make a hundred of them if we find if the first one is faulty. Exactly. Uh, number seven there is red. Yep. So it didn't pass. Failed. It, it didn't pass. Yep. Uh, the code is not perfect right out of the gate. You know. So we'll have to refine it as we go along. So we've got the piece. It's all done. It's ready to go. Actually, we have to uh, prime it. Okay. Right on. Parts on the table. And now we have a part that's ready to be sold to a customer. Fantastic. Okay, right on. Yeah, well, thanks for showing me around. Yeah, no problem. I really appreciate it. My name's Ben. You're watching Next TV. Have a great day. Sharp.